I had no experience in coding. Like the last experience I had in coding was like junior year of high school and it was just background color changes. The one thing I knew with code was that the color white was FF, FF. That's all I got. Hello everybody. My name is Nyan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today I am going over this grand career switch I made. For me, it was grand because it really kind of was at, you know, day and night, just one day I was in finance and the next day I was not. I went from having a finance offer for about, I believe it was $45,000 to accepting an offer of over $120,000 worth when it came to salary and bonuses and stock. And so, yeah, let me get into that. So all this happened a year ago in the spring of 2020. And so I'm pretty sure that phrase itself brings on a lot of feelings for many people and so yes for me it was in the spring of 2020 and i was on my way to my like first class of the day i was a college student i was majoring in finance and accounting i was a senior in college and i was just six weeks away from graduating with my degree i get along with thirty thousand other students an email saying hey y'all after y'all go home today we'll never see you again and it was like huh like what what just happened all just suddenly the world stopped my world stopped and i suddenly as we most of us i think felt had all of this time it was a like a pause it was three months after new year's all of the goals you had planned and everything now you had the time to do it you could lose that weight you could learn the skill x y and z the time is yours and so it took me a couple days to do that i remember actually having back pain from the amount of time i spent laying in bed i literally just laid in bed for days until one day i was like okay girl like we gotta do something we can't lay in bed for in my mind like two more weeks and so i'm like okay let's learn something new i just remember posting this instagram that was like i may not be losing weight but i'm learning something new and it was actually a boomerang of me on free code camp and just learning the basics of html and css now my decision to learn to code had nothing to do with a career switch at all it was just I think many of us can vouch for the fact that coding is something that people just say to learn. Just like how people say, oh, you should put time in for traveling and things like that. That's just a thing people say. Coding is one of those things. And so now I had all this time. I was like, okay, you know what? People keep saying this is a great thing to learn. Like, let me try it out. I have all this time. So let's see. So yes, I started looking up just resources to learn to code. I'm not a book reader when it comes to learning new skills. I prefer hands-on action. And so, yeah, I looked up the best way to do that with learning to code as a complete, complete beginner. I had no experience in coding. Like the last experience I had in coding was like junior year of high school and it was just colored background color changes. The one thing I knew with code was that the color white was FF, FF that's all I got and so yes look up how to learn to code and free code camp came up and I really liked their platform it was a very easy to use platform you didn't need to download anything you didn't need to go on VS code you didn't need to do any of the additional things coding can entail and so I really really loved it and I was Hooked. I was so hooked within just a few hours that that day in about three to four days thereafter I stayed up till 3 a.m. learning HTML and CSS so much so that after about one to two hours of learning on free code camp I would go my separate route and end up downloading VS code and just my own tools so that I could test my own learning and create these static web pages nothing fancy at all like it was not good. Even thinking about what projects I made now, I was so proud of them then and I should have been because, you know, I had no experience. But looking at it now, I'm like, wow. <laughs> oof, oof, yeah, not a sight for sore eyes. But yes, I was just so hooked on it. And so after about a week of that, I started to really panic because I was like, oh my gosh. I want this. I want, I want to do this all the time and be paid 
a nice chunk of change for it. And so I started to panic because if you remember, I, but at the start of the story was the six weeks away from graduating. Now I'm about five to four weeks away from graduating and I don't have a job and now I'm not going to get a job because the world is shut down. So now I'm not even going to get a job and all of this. And so I was fortunate enough to get an interview for this one job as a credit analyst. And you know, it's not really anything to make your heart pound with excitement, but I was like, okay, it's a job. Like, let's see how it goes. And so I go through the whole interview process while simultaneously trying to learn what I can do about this whole situation I'm in now. Now about a week and a half has passed since the start of the story. And so around that time, CNBC's Make It put out a video, I'm pretty sure we all know it, I don't even have to say it, of the amazing Bukola and her story of how she became a software engineer without a degree. And what's funny is that's not, that wasn't even the tagline. I was just watching it because it was like, wow, $210,000 and it's a black woman. I don't think I like CNBC's making it, especially because of the finance part of it, because I was a finance major. But I don't recall ever seeing a black woman, not part of a couple episode who made that much ever in one of their episodes at the time. I, it may have been there, but I didn't see it. And so I was so quick to click on this episode and watch it just be like, wow, like look at her. And then she starts talking <laughs> and she's talking about how she's a software engineer. And so that was for me a sign in itself. Then she's talking about how she didn't get a degree in it. And so I was like, hold up, hold the f up. But at some point during the video, she talks about coding boot camps. Now she didn't go to a coding boot camp, but I had never even heard the term at all. I didn't know what she was really talking about until she explained it further. And so I first tried to see the, you know, free opportunities there were to learn to code the ones she talked about, but geographically it was limited. And so I did look more into coding boot camps and I stumbled upon Flatiron School. At the time, the top coding boot camps I was looking at were Flatiron School and General Assembly, because when I looked up top coding boot camps, those were the ones that popped up. I'm not saying they're the top, I'm just saying those are the ones that popped up. Like, And so Google told me that these were the best. I was like, okay, bet, because I'm gonna need it because I have no experience. So I'm gonna need a top tier program. And so yes, yeah, start the whole interview process and application process with Flatiron School. I ended up leaning more towards them. I can't remember why I leaned more towards Flatiron School versus General Assembly because I actually didn't even have an interview with General Assembly. I didn't even apply to that point. I think it's that by the time General Assembly reached back to me, I was already pretty deep into Flatiron. And keep in mind, I'm trying to graduate. I am also interviewing for another job in a different field. And so I was just tired. And so I was like, you know what, let me just put all my focus into Flatiron School. So I go through the application process and I get in. I have a link above explaining the application and interview process. But yeah, I get accepted. I apply for an ISA and the income share agreement because because coding boot camps are expensive. They are expensive. And your girl didn't have a hundred bucks to her name, never mind fifteen thousand dollars. And so yes, I applied for an ISA, which I got, and then boom, it was off to the races. To prepare for boot camp, between the time of my acceptance and the first day of school, it was about a month in between, which is actually shorter than is advised because they really want you to prepare beforehand. They give you a lot of pre-work and homework, and so you really want to make sure you're not lagging behind because now you're behind before you even start. So that's not good. At that time, I also found out that I got the job as a credit analyst. They offered me $45,000. And for me, I was like, no, I'm okay. Not really because of the money, but because the money didn't help. <laughs> but, but because over the years, I had realized that finance as a career just wasn't for me. I have a video above explaining that as well. But yeah, finance as a job just wasn't for me. And so now add a lower than average salary on top of it. Yes, it was COVID and everything, but I'm just saying my mentality, like, yeah, I don't even like it 
and the pay isn't good. So it's like, so why am I, why would I go? Why, why am I here? And so, yes, yeah, so I decided to decline the offer. So I just go full force in with Flatiron, which is 15 weeks long. So just about four months. And I, you could not reach me in that time. I was full head down mode. Like you could not touch me at all all do not talk to me do not know friends who i don't know them and so that was me during those four months it sounds awful but yo i was serious about this the fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money i was not about to be in the hook for that and also not have a job and so yes did a lot of just schoolwork by the halfway point i started applying to jobs this is not what anyone else really did and it's not really advised but i was like advisal schmeisel like no we need a job now and so i started applying to jobs early really trying to network and reach out to people on linkedin and do all of these different things to increase my odds of getting that job and it all paid off because the day of my graduation i got my first job offer which was insane so so insane to say that i'm graduating with a job offer now i didn't choose that job <laughs> i didn't choose it but I, it was just so nice to know that i had something and so i didn't choose that job right off the bat i decided to let it sit for a little bit while i finished the interview processes of a couple of other companies and by the end of that month which was october so i graduated october second and by the end of october october 29th i received my job offer for the job i have now i work at dreamworks animations as a developer and it was weird because they actually hired me a year out because i was a very new graduate and with graduate and undergraduate hiring a lot of times they do their hiring a year out and so i actually got this job but then had about nine months to kind of just chill while i waited for the job to start i actually just started my job like six weeks ago and so yeah i was just chilling but i was not about to let my coding skills go to waste because coding is not like riding a bike at all you can't leave and come back and all's good like no no do not do that please and so i decided to seek out opportunities that would involve temporary work but i could still code and develop and make sure i'm really advancing my skill sets so that i could even be even more prepared once i start working here and so i started working in the commerce cloud development sphere i had no idea what commerce cloud development was to to be honest if you wanted me to talk about it i probably would you, see, you can hear it. I probably would stutter quite a bit um, talking about it, but it was a huge, huge, amazing learning opportunity. And I loved it. I loved my team. I loved the projects I got to work on and it was phenomenal. So here I am now a year later after declining this other job in my major, declining it and see, getting almost a full $100,000 raise. Yeah, it's almost also a hundred thousand when we look at the entire offer package yeah a solid almost hundred thousand dollars more and i am just so happy and proud of all that i did to get here however it is hard it's it's not a walk in the park don't think that oh i just went to boot camp and here i am like no it's a lot there were a lot of sleepless nights it's it's a lot and so there were definitely specific things i did that helped me get here my entire channel really is devoted to providing you with those tips on things that i did things i didn't do and whatnot and so if you're in the same space right now of trying to transition into this field or boot camp or self-teaching definitely check out different videos if you're more along in your process and are like okay well i have the skills but i can't get a job i do provide one-on-one -on -one consulting to help you get to that goal of a job nowadays a resume doesn't cut it a resume does not cut it especially when you don't have a computer science degree it sucks especially with this field where it's been shown time and time again you don't need that degree to show that you can do the job but it just makes it still unfortunately that much harder to get the job even though you have the skills and so check out the link in my bio for more information on that let me know in the comments below where you are in your transition into software engineering are you still thinking about it are you enrolled in a boot camp are you still self-teaching or are you looking for a job right now and really just don't understand how to best navigate that space so let me know below and thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you later bye